Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue with the grind at Le Mans. We are rapidly approaching the date when we're going to have to really make things final. As I was working away this afternoon, a new skin came through from JB and I couldn't resist. Even though this car is not qualified or capable of being entered into the Le Mans version of the race we are going to do, I felt this rendition of this skin needed to be put into the into the race somehow you can see the inflection of the widowmaker logo into the bmw logo on the bonnet of the car and on the doors and i just felt it was a great play on the process and something that should actually be in the game thank you jb as we make it over here to the race we take the world touring car 700 option and we introduce the car to you. This is the 700 PP or less using any racing tyres. It's a 30 minute race. So a total of 30 minutes and however many laps it takes you do it with fuel at 6 and the tyres at times 10. It is one of the grind races for which you should run this lots and lots of times to be able to earn the credits. The way we approach this is to use a different car every time we do it and to try and find a more interesting way of grinding away those credits. And in these videos, we're promoting this race that we're going to do on the 15th and 16th of June. We have seven seats still available. If people want to join us, please get in touch and we'll tell you more about the race. I've got other videos out there that can, if you search for Le Mans 24 hour on this, on this channel, you'll find those videos and you'll find more details. But do drop me a line if you want to be part of it. So for this car at 699.97 pp, we've got the fully customizable suspension, which is default, fully customizable rear diff, which we've set to the Magic 555. We have tuned the downforce 900 on the rear, 547 on the front, and the ECU at 80, and the power restrictor all the way down to 70. This only gives us 337 horsepower for 950 kilos it's a very light car but it should be capable we have the gearing which i'm just going to knock down to 290 the turbocharger we don't have any no other extras nothing else at all we've got the brake controller set to minus five forward it is what it is so here we are we arrive at the track Settings for this race will be assist, traction control one, weak ABS, count zero assistance on strong. That's just to keep the back end in check while it's raining. We know it's going to rain. Controller settings, we're on a Fanatec DD+. Plus. This is the GT Extreme. Force feedback max torque three, force feedback sensitivity ten. Without any further ado, let's dive in, folks. So as we said, racing hard tyres, we need to watch that fuel and see where that's going to get to us. I don't believe we need to reduce the fuel map at this time. This car is going to struggle for pace on the straight. What we've got to do is be pretty timely with our overtakes and have good control of the car. Make sure it goes around the corners. Few penalties. I said at the start, it's a shame this car isn't eligible. It's a Group 2, not a Group 1 or a uh, modern LMP, to be honest. If it was a G GR3, which the last time we used the McLaren was, that is a GR3 car. That is eligible. Let's drive on. laps of fuel so we get four laps in this should be a one stopper got a little bit of damage on the front we're up to 16th place mr kato is about to slide past us as you can see we're struggling to uh, to gain pace we need the draft to pick up speed we're going to break on the very last sign mr kato come on we need to get early acceleration to slide onto the back of these guys and use the draft where possible we've got it let's try and hold that mustang out we're going to use mr cookerbun here up gear we're going to try and get the toe off mr manjano he slides out of the way that's going to hamper us oh, the 
Mazda comes back. We're going to have to hold this line. We're about to turn into a corner. Well, no, we can. Here's the Mustang. It's coming back. Late on the brakes there. Ooh. Yeah, we're through. We're through. That camp steer flashing away like mad. So we're up with Mr. Manjano. Mr. Hazal there making the hole in the air in the Subaru. We're going to use this Mitzi to the end of the day. Yeah, Mr. Mendoza, are we in the right place? Let's see if we can pick up a dress and haul ourselves past. Breaking on the outside. Let's see. No, we're not going to be able to. Oh, there's a bit of a touch there between the Aston and the Subaru. So 14 seconds behind the leaders. We're now into 12th place. Fuel. Yeah, we've got loads. So let's check the rain radar, see where that's going to take us. We're just going to wait for rain. We know it's going to rain. We've been making mistakes on previous races about making tyre choices. Diving on the brakes there, much later on the brakes than these boys can be. GR4 cars don't have the best brakes brakes are tuned to their engine power and their their stopping ability so for this previously capable GR1 car of its time it has much bigger brakes and therefore much bigger stopping power and it probably weighs about 300 kilos less than those boys see the dent in the back door that uh, Mr. Hizal left there on the Aston as we went past. Oh, catching Mr. Gallo. He's got exceptional front end grip, this car. Able to haul it round that corner. Mr. Sugawara, is he going to leave us a gap? We're able to. I don't think we're going to squeeze up the inside before the corner. We are. We're going to be able to go wide. First gear just to get in there. Third gear to accelerate away. Here's the tow from Mr. Lopez and a fellow BMW. I know this is McLaren Longtail, but at the end of the day, BMW driven. just bounced off in there got some front damage but kept it inside the white lines still 12 seconds behind the leaders Mr Portilla pulling away Mr Healy here just hoping to dip into his toe if not Mr Kawakami as it comes past in the RCF we're going to have to go for a gear and get in it there we go see if we can borrow some speed They're much quicker than us aren't they Ideally, we'd like to slap a turbo on and give ourselves some opportunity, but we'd have to add some weight. We'd have to add a lot of weight, I'd say. Third gear acceleration, they're a little bit slow, but... We've got the pull through. Where are we on fuel? 3.3. We've got plenty of fuel. Let's see if we can take Mr. Healing out. That'll be Mr. McEwen in front of us. Oh, Mr. Healy. The RCF Kawakami coming back as well. We're just going to get on the brakes. Round the outside. That'll do us. <laughs> Almost blew that. We probably will blow it if the little penalty flag drops in. Oh! It's only a lift penalty. That's not so bad. We put the white lines outside of our right tyres, didn't we? That was... Uh, mistake we're going to move over and let these two boys take the line we're just going to overtake oh he's just wanted more that was rude see if we can gain a little 
bit back there. It's very much a race, this one. These hard tyres now just starting to show a little bit of heat, a little bit of wear. Oh, Mr. Kawakami, I'm going to leave you room. You don't need to nudge my back door. very much later on the brakes there weren't they but we've got the initial power to get past them sorry Mr Healy Ask me again. I'm going to give them room on the right. I'm going to break very late. Come in there. Here's Mr. McEwen. We're now going to drive hard through here. Made that pass before the corners. Allows us to oh, really flow it out right to the right and pick up another penalty, I'm guessing. No rain on the radar at this time. Yes, there is. It's there at the bottom. We've got two second penalty for that transition across that white line. Oh, my Lord. So, Mr. Blazan has gone to the pits in the Suzuki. Portilla and Yamanaka carry on now. I'm hoping that we're going to get there before that rain. One more lap. We take the fastest lap of the race, 4.16.559. Now in this race, the reduced PP, these cars are somewhat much lower in their capability. We really have to tune them down. In the full race at Le Mans, we're going to be bopped, so the only thing you're going to be able to change is the downforce off the front and rear wings. Can't imagine that there'll be much, much difference. I mean... If you really want grip in the wet, you're going to want the downforce to try and run a bit faster. If if you're going to try and tune the car for the dry weather, which we have got absolutely no idea, it won't be a realistic weather report, will it? There's going to be nine intervals of rain or shine or changes of weather, and it could rain every single stint. You never know, it could rain half of them, three of them, two of them, could rain none of them. So whatever you choose to set up, you have to make that setup call at the start of the race and be able to drive it in all conditions. So we can put counter steer on, can't we? We can put um, traction control on, we can reduce the engine map. That rain doesn't look to be super coming in, does it? It's just gone very cool. And we'll have to see where that rain goes. It could be a full dry race, this. That means it's going to be very quick. 8.9, nine seconds ahead they are. So... We're into third place. Mr. Portilla, Mr. Yamanaka out there in the front. There's around about 2.3 seconds between them. Mr. Portilla leading the way. Highly likely that we'll be going to the pits this lap. We have the tyre wear advantage and fuel. So subject to the rain, subject to weather. We put Mr. McEwen behind us by some 6.5 seconds, so... And we're losing time further to Portilla. We are just going to see what, what sort of game we can make, and then see if we can do the overcut on the, on the pit stop. Going to run a lap extra, a lap, a lap more than they do. Again, we've got this little two-second penalty here for being very aggressive after overtaking McEwen. But that 
time ticks up. Now we could pit now. And that would be four laps to the end because I anticipate this will be a seven lapper. Don't think we're going to be going fast enough to get to the eight laps. We could pit now and take four laps of fuel. Or we can pit next time round and take three laps of fuel. There is rain coming in top right hand corner. We know pitting now is the right call then. Very grey, very overcast. The lights on the, uh, the ferris wheel there are becoming very obvious. This won't go to night time, it will stay holy day. Portilla and Yamanaka then go to the pits. Some strong rain on the outside right now. I see this being a bit of a count, bit of a shout, a bit of a call. For next time we come in, is to know what tyres to be on. At the minute, it looks like hards. The race tyres are still going to be the prominent one. Away. Mr. Portilla now is taking fuel. And he's out. We are 28 seconds ahead of Portilla, who's managed to get back out in second place. That's how quickly he's made progress. He was quicker on the straight. Everybody else has pitted now. We're the only ones left to pit. That rain cloud is just retreating away, even though it looks really grey and overcast. We haven't physically had any rain. The track is perfectly dry. These hard tyres just performing beautifully well. And at this point, based on that indicator, I don't feel there's much requirement to change tyres. Looks like we're just going to take the fuel. We're not going to be pitting before the 15 minutes, so... We only are going to get three laps in, I think, of the next in, so... We've got to make sure that those 32 seconds that we are ahead are enough and it looks like we're on target for another fastest lap looks like a possible 4.15 not the fastest lap of cars we've run around here we've we've run in the low 4.0s we've, we've seen a couple of cars in the 3s and we're going to see a couple of those probably later on in the series Maybe, maybe not at the uh, reduced PP of 700, maybe not. So fuel level, let's have a look now. 1.2 laps of fuel, so 25%. We're going to be half a lap short, so we're going to have to take fuel. We're only going to have to add two and a half laps of fuel, I think. is 12 minutes I think we might have we might get the eighth lap in if it doesn't rain I think we need to take all the fuel at 4 16 so that's 8 30 13 minutes I think we're going to be okay on three laps don't think we're going to need that fourth lap. Looking at it, 4.16, we're three seconds up, so they could be 4.12s. That's 8.24, 12.36. I think we might be pushing for that last lap, you know. Let's take all four laps of fuel. Taking the fuel could push us beyond that requirement. 
There we go. So we're not going to change tyres. We're going to take all the fuel. So looking forward to where we're going then at the Le Mans race. We actually did a live stream last night that lasted best part of six and a half hours. That was done in one seated sit with a couple of loo breaks. That six hours flew past. Absolutely flew past. And if you're really into this race and the weather is going great and you're feeling good about the drive it's it's really easy to get into the race and really get stuck in we're going to take all the fuel at four laps there we go and they've come in behind us Paul Tiller's carrying on is he going to be alongside us 12.16 there's I think we're going to be 30 seconds short Portilla and Yamanaka are there behind us. There they are. So there's a possible chance here they're going to catch us as the sun comes out. Three point nine seconds. We're just going to have to see where we go what we also know is they're going to pit again where we're not so let's see if they're going to catch us as we charge down this straight there's only going to be three more laps two after this one 4.2 4.1 so they are catching 3.9 Rain, top right hand corner. It keeps threatening. Is it going to give us an absolute blast in the last 10 minutes? I can't imagine it is. I think that's retreating away. I think it's going to show and then show and go. Down 3.8 seconds. spot of rain just appearing one would always hope that this would be the rain that we'll get at the real event just rain clouds appearing on the screen and then hesitating and will it be incoming or not you know how much do I talk about it whilst I'm on the stream am I saying You've got to check your aim radar. All teams will be a subject to the same thing. We get a penalty there. Oh. Oh, and there is some rain on that cloud. We've got rain from the south as well. Right from the southeast. So all, all teams will be subject to the same rain and we'll see the same weather. Just depending on where you are on the track at any sort of one time will sort of give you an indication of whether you're going to get the same amount of rain. But... In less than four minutes, you're going to encounter that same part of the track as well, aren't you? So, you know it's coming. If one team's encountered it, will another. We need to see where that rain's trajectory is. Is that rain heading towards the track? We've got nine minutes left of the race. took the extra lap of fuel didn't I that's the race on again I think that rain is going to go to the north and south of us I think it's going to skirt all the way around I don't think we're going to see it I think we're going to be really lucky with this race and get a, a full dry race something we've never really seen the likes of it always seems to rain in this part of the world This is going to be so close to the eighth lap. Now we straddled the sausage, didn't we?
ten second lead for which they haven't gone to the pitch yet that cloud looks mighty like a I was going to suggest a tortoise looking for a leaf but that would be subliminal thinking and probably need to visit the psychiatrist but that rain has skirted round us we've been very very lucky 13 second lead we've just managed to break that away we managed to delay the pit stop by one lap get in and out of the pit stop with a three second gap and we've been able to just keep extending that lead even with token penalties it's a great car and if we talk about the car for a minute even though it's not eligible for our race it is an absolute stunner we're going to get two at two attempts here at the lap record I think this one is going to be a 14 15 2 maybe when we get round the fuel load is lightening up the 4 15 2 is what we're anticipating we're going to break right on the last brake marker corner marker Helicopter hovering over the trees. All right, so that could be a, a 15 4. We've lost a little bit of time coming through there. And we've got rain top left hand corner just disappearing off the screen now. That's the same cloud as we saw charging past some five minutes remaining. touch 14.2 seconds ahead Portilla just holding off Yamanaka behind us Sugawara in the RCF it looks like is it Sugawara in the RCF maybe then Healy in the Genesis Gallo in the NSX Kevlin will be in the GT86 from Toyota Mr. Tapaye will be in the Ford, I would expect, the yellow one. Will we get round to the start of the pits again? Before that turns 4.15. 30, 30 odd seconds to make it back, 25. I don't think so, I think we're going to miss the 8th lap by about 10 seconds even if we didn't have the penalties we would have still missed I think that looked like we could probably hit a 12 or a 13 probably a 13 there's the 413 so we aren't going to make it round unless we put in an absolute barnstorm of a lap. A 4.11. Just underneath the 12. That is excruciatingly quick. 21 seconds now ahead of Portillo. We're anticipating him going to the pits. We'll increase our lead quite significantly, I would have thought. There he is. Portillo's in and Yamanak is in. We are on the last lap. It's a good job we took the fuel. But we've still got lots of fuel anyway, haven't we? Because it was the extra lap, so we didn't need it. You'd have watched. If, if, if we hadn't took the fuel, we'd have probably been like seven or eight seconds faster. Because we'd have been carrying a lighter load. We'd have pit stopped maybe four seconds slower. Then we'd have gained a couple of seconds. We could have probably had that extra lap, but with no fuel. Everybody's gone to the pits. We're now 50 seconds clear. Doesn't look like we're going to lap anybody today. But as a one-stop, absolutely rocking machine. 
and it's a great livery. We'll get to see that again at the end of the race. We're still potentially on for a fastest lap, which we should be. Those tyres have held up tremendously. How well it would have gone with the turbo should we have added weight. Taken some power out, then put the turbo in to put more power back. We'd have used more fuel, but there's plenty of room for the fuel. Not really changing. Changing the gear into sixth, it's not really needed. We're not stressing the engine at all. Just lost a little bit of time coming down there. Just got into the reds. Five second lead. Mr. Portiller is just coming through the first chicane on the Multan. One minute thirty remaining of the race as we drive into the setting sun in the late afternoon. Will be the very similar conditions to what we should experience at the start of the race on the 15th of June. That sun will start to set and it will go dark, and we'll see the lights of the fun fair very prominent, like they were earlier in the, in the dark, cloudy afternoon. We made a little bit of time back there, over two and a half tenths. lighter fuel load allowing us to really get the toe down car really gripping well on the same set of tyres that we started the race really good safe run not a hint of rain at all Lost the tenth coming through there. We're in fifth gear. We're just running the car a little bit flat. Dive on the brakes. One more slide through the chicane. See if we can improve on that lap time. Oh, what did we get? I think that was 0.6 of a second quicker. I think that was a like a 4.11.3. But there she is. Clear victory by over a minute, it looked like. If I recall, the McLaren Longtail F1 GTR. Absolutely stunning beast in a stunning livery. Shod by Mr. JB at JB Designs. There we go, 56.5 seconds ahead of Portilla, who, who led the race to start with and came in second. We got the fastest lap of the race on the last lap of 4.11.390. And the slowest car there, Mr. Bishop in the 4.58, was 2 minutes 29 seconds behind. Did we get the clean race bonus? Yes, we did, 825,000k. That's what you're here for. Our, our cash bank, our credit bank account is going on the way up. And there you have it, folks. There's the next instalment for the Le Mans race for Make-A-Wish. And if you do care to join us, please do consider joining us for the day, for the night, for the morning. At any time, drop in. It could be something in it for you. And consider what we're doing. But we'll see you on the next one. All the best for now, folks. You take care. We'll see you. All the best.